I would now like to introduce L. McLeod, salutatorian of the class of 2015. Good morning to Sister Gus, Mr. McLeod, Dad, the Board of Trustees, Dr. Adler, parents, students, faculty, and to my 47 sisters behind me. I want to tell you several stories about us, the class of 2015. Of all words that best describe the class of 2015, it is change. 15 years ago, for the first time, we walked past the large cast iron gates into a place that we now call home. Immediately, we began creating friendships and making souvenirs, memories that will last a lifetime with women who I now and will forever call my sisters. Our journey here has been a unique one. Over the past 15 years, the class of 2015 has accepted, addressed, and most importantly, created change that indicates the strength, courageousness, and passion of my sisters. It began in the third grade when we returned to New Orleans to rebuild after Hurricane Katrina. Our teachers proposed a new third grade project, much different from those before. It was a musical called The Thirteen Colonies. At first, because it was a new endeavor for the lower school and it was a musical, we were skeptical. But ultimately, we embraced it with open arms and in keeping with our grade's character, we worked hard together and killed that musical. Really, I'm not sure if any of you have seen the video of the 13 Colonies, but everyone should. From Sarah Huft as Leif Erikson to Lizzie Mintz and Emily Frischert's duet and interpretive dance, it was pure Broadway. Then, as fifth graders, we decided that a trip to Disney World to enhance our science education was needed. After some begging and prodding, and with a little help from some teachers and parents, we ended up in Animal Kingdom for a portion of the time mixing chemicals and creating goo, but admittedly we spent a lot of time riding Mount Everest. Again, the class of 2015 changed the middle school learning dynamic and created a new tradition. In eighth grade, we faced one of our biggest cha changes, a change in our grade dynamic. This year, above all others, we proved how giving and courageous the women sitting behind me and one who is not sitting behind me are. We faced a great tragedy, but our grade embraced this change. While it was extremely difficult, we turned it into a positive one. Shelby inspired the women behind me to go and change our world by living her message of hope and love. Sarah Norman, Juliet Khalifi, Emily Frischertz, and Sarah McKendrick started Shelby work, and with the help of a majority of our grade, have raised, have raised thousands of dollars in order to further leukemia lymphoma research. No grade. No group of people could embrace the change, this change with as much strength and grace as my sisters have. Finally, as we entered our upper school years, change abounded. In our senior year alone, we faced a new class schedule, a new dean of students, and a new headmistress. But if we could conquer the mad minute, if Emily and Madeline could make it to Disney World, if I could recover, recover from the embarrassment of the roses, if Keisha could answer the date in Spanish, and if we could get over losing dodgeball our junior year, then we could easily adapt to these changes and make the best of them. And we did. A few months ago, neck deep in the college process, college application process, one of my top colleges presented me with this essay question. It said, we are a community of quirks, both in language and in traditions. What are your quirks and why are they important to you? After this essay prompt, I began to think, why is my grade so unique? Why are we, of all grades, so strong? Then I realized behind me there are future surgeons and oncologists, attorneys, actresses, therapists, world travelers, professional athletes, a few stunt devils, and potentially even a future president of the United States. They are scholars and intellectuals, but also foodies, baby lovers, shopaholics, workaholics, animal lovers, music gurus, daredevils, and artists. We are celebrity fanatics and future Jimmy Graham wives. <laughs> Our uniqueness makes us strong because we embrace who we are and what we love and don't apologize for it. 
We are confident in our identities and we truly care about our passions and commit to them. Together, the class of 2015 is a crazy group who likes to laugh and sing, but we will do so many powerful and world-changing things. Sacred Heart has prepared us for our future. Rosie and Posey will live in us forever, but living together, helping each other, loving and laughing and crying with each other for the past 15 years gave us an unparalleled readiness for life past Sacred Heart. The company Apple stated, here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs and square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward and while some may seem as the crazy ones, we see genius because the people who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones who do. It has also been said that never believe that a few caring people can't change the world for indeed that's all who ever have and we care. The class of 2015 rocks change as well as we rock our plaid kilts. We roll with the punches as well as we dodge balls at rally. As we walk out of the cast iron gates for the last time tonight, my sisters and I know how much sacred art has changed our lives and how ready and able us crazy, fun-loving rebels are, all, are to take on the world. So congratulations to the greatest class to pass through these iron doors, iron gates, the class of 2015. You are all incredible and you've accomplished so much. Remember, at Sacred Heart, our girls change the world. And I can't wait to see how each of you, my sisters, change yours. Thank you.